Welcome to Episode 5, also known as Part 2 of the Mackinac Island Adventure on Uncovering the Corners of the World podcast. I'm your host, Karina Kasmala. In each episode, through research, and in some cases, personal experiences actually visiting these places, I'll be explaining some of the hidden locations and attractions around the United States and around the globe. On last week's Wednesday episode, June 24, 2020, we traveled to Mackinac Island, Michigan, one of the 35,000 islands in Michigan and known to be carless, meaning that the only way to travel on the island is by foot, by bike, or by horse carriage. We also checked out three places, Skull Cave, Fort Mackinac, and the Mackinac Bridge that isn't on the island but connects the two parts, peninsulas of Michigan that are separated by water. If you haven't checked out last week's episode, I recommend you listen to episode four before or after listening to this episode. This week's Wednesday, on the first day of July in 2020, we're continuing our adventure on Mackinac Island and around that portion of Michigan. Side fact about Mackinac Island, Mackinac Island has 13 fudge stores and imports 10 tons of butter and 10 tons of sugar per year, as mentioned by the Mackinac Island website. Built in 1887, with the intention to attract vacationers or visitors who back then traveled by ship, is the Grand Hotel. Yet the Grand Hotel is known for its front porch that is lined with flags and flowers reaching 660 feet or 201 meters, making it the world's largest front porch. As mentioned in the book Unique America, that's the length of two football fields plus 60 feet. In 1887, the price to stay in a room at the Grand Hotel was three to five dollars. Today, it costs $149 per night. In 1895, Mark Twain taught in the Grand Hotel. While in the 1980s, the movie Somewhere in Time about a man who travels back in time to meet a woman he falls in love with, used the Grand Hotel as a filming location for the movie. In 2019, based on the Grand Hotel website, there is a total of 397 guest rooms. Today, the hotel appears to be stylized in the 19th century colors and furniture with added touches of modern day technology like a flat screen TV. With a typical activity at the Grand Hotel is the lawn games of croquet, which is the sport of hitting small plastic balls with a wooden mallet or hammer through hoops that are standing upright on a lawn. While at roughly 3.30 to 5 p.m., visitors can partake in the traditional afternoon tea in the hotel's parlor. The Grand Hotel is at 286 Grand Avenue Mackinac Island, Michigan. At 7029 Iran Road, Mackinac Island is the Mackinac State Park, and it is the first Michigan State Park from 1895, with over 80% of the island actually being the state park itself. A known location in Mackinac State Park is the Arch Rock, which is 146 feet above seawater and is 50 feet wide. The reason for the name is because the rock formations create a natural rock bridge, while the sides of this bridge are covered by trees. The arch provides an opening to see the lake behind it. I did mention earlier that there are other islands around Michigan and for the most part, the islands are privately owned, with a lighthouse on the island surrounded by trees or can't be accessed by the public, like Summer Island or Trout Island, and others are managed by the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. However, there are a few of these islands that have visitors. Charity Island, or Big Charity 
Island, another name that it goes by, is located lower than Mackinac Island on Saginaw Bay. If you were to look at a map of Michigan or look up Charity Island, the island would be between Whitestone Point, Michigan and Caseville, Michigan, or roughly not too far from Sleeper State Park. Specifically, the address for Charity Island is Augress, Michigan. The only way to get to Charity Island is by boat. The island was originally home to Native Americans, who used charit, which is a type of rock, for tools. They grew squash, beans, and corn before the Europeans came to the island. Charity Island is 222 acres, and there is nothing on the island except a bright, white-colored lighthouse next to a white-colored house with a strawberry-red-colored roof that was built in 1857. Only two people live on the island. This island is considered to have the best bird watching sites in all of Saginaw Bay and where there are over 200 migratory birds on the island according to the Charity Island website. Located on Lake Michigan between High Island, Garden Island, and Hog Island is Beaver Island. To get onto Beaver Island, you can either take a ferry boat or plane from Charlevoix, Michigan. This island has a population of 600 people and is 13 miles long and 6 miles wide. It is considered the largest island in Lake Michigan according to the Beaver Island Boat Company website. The history of the inhabited island traces back to the mid-1700s with the Otawas. The Otawas are a Native American tribe who at the, that time were supposedly engaged in helping in the battles between the English and the French. A man by the name Father Baraga from Arbe Croce, France, decided to baptize the Native Americans to become Catholics. In 1813, a man by the name James Spring, who was a leader and considered himself a king on Beaver Island, met Joseph Smith. Strang considered the island his kingdom, crowning himself king in 1850, or specifically crowning himself a Mormon king. His followers were called the Strangites. One of the attractions on Beaver Island is the Beaver Island Marine Museum at 38105 Michigan Avenue, Beaver Island. The museum includes ships that were used to transport products like lumber or used for fishing along with information about shipbuilding and diving activities. Another attraction on Beaver Island is the Old Mormon Print Shop Museum at 26275 Main Street, Beaver Island. The museum was built by the followers of James Strang in 1850. This was the place where Northern Michigan's first newspaper was published and religious artifacts and Mormon doctrines along with the Native American inhabitants and Irish people that lived on the island, as mentioned on the Beaver Island Historical Society website. And yes, there are beavers on Beaver Island, as mentioned by that same website. Drummond Island is located at the border of Michigan and Canada on Lake Huron and can be reached by plane, boat, or car. Drummond Island has a population of roughly 1,000 people and has its own set of 40 inland lakes. Visitors can rent an ATV to drive on the 100 miles of trails. Another attraction on this island is the Drummond Island Historical Museum at S. Water Street, Drummond, Michigan. The museum includes artifacts like hand tools from Native Americans made in the 200 BC era, as mentioned by the Michigan Back Roads Getaways website, along with other tools and pictures that were made in the late 1800s and early 1900s, along with a display of a British fort. And the last island for this week. Its name sounds like the name of a true royal island. Isle Royale Island is on Lake Superior and is closer between Wisconsin, Minnesota, and Canada. 
more specifically northwest of Lake Superior in Laurentia. In order to get to this island, you either have to take a boat or a seaplane. Despite having no population on the island, the island is home to moose and wolves. One of the places on this island is the Isle Royale National Park, and it is considered by the Pure Michigan website that it is the least visited national park. And what is considered the best way to visit this park is by backpacking and kayaking. However, the backpacking wilderness adventure comes with its own set of required permits. Thank you for listening this week to Episode 5, Mackinac Island Adventure Part 2. If you haven't listened to last week's Episode 4, Mackinac Island, Michigan, Relive the American Revolution and the Pontiac Rebellion, I encourage you to go check it out. Tune in next week as we explore other adventures in the United States.